Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. When sci-fi writers think of the future, they tend to think of flying cars and human-like robots that do all of our work for us. And while we're not quite there yet with either of those, we're getting close to a different innovation, self-driving cars. In fact, companies like Google and Tesla are already working on these. It's possible that within the next 10 or 20 years, these cars will become common and our roads might even become safer. I mean, looking at the numbers, about 1.5 1.2 million people die every year from traffic accidents and around 94% of those accidents are caused by human error. So it's possible that well-made self-driving cars could drastically decrease that number. But also these cars could make driving possible again for people who couldn't drive otherwise, like the visually impaired or elderly. And on top of all of that, think of how much you can get done during your daily commute. You could watch an entire episode of Game of Thrones, or a bunch of episodes of Life Noggin, clip your toenails while watching Life Noggin, or, you know, you could just sleep while listening to Life Noggin. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. First, let's figure out how these cars even work. This is probably obvious, but the cars first need a GPS system to get a rough idea of where they are and where they need to go. They also have a bunch of sensors to constantly scan the area around them, looking for any hazards, whether that's another car, or a bicycle, or a huge jacked up bird. Yeah. That is a mutant. For Google's self-driving cars, these sensors include a camera to see and radar and lasers to map out the area. And these are constantly monitoring 360 degrees around the car, which is much better than what a distracted driver can do. But arguably the most important and challenging facet of self-driving cars is the software that makes them run. This has to take in all of the data from the sensors and GPS, and even things like traffic and weather conditions, and make decisions based on that. It determines how to steer, stop, and go, and everything else involved in getting you from point A to point B. But of course, this technology isn't perfect, and inevitably these cars will be put in a situation where a crash is unavoidable. And in some cases, the car will have to choose between two evils, like crashing into pedestrians or putting the car's passenger at risk. In that case, what should it do? In a study, researchers found that most people would rather the car sacrifice the passengers for the common good. That said, these same people would rather ride in a car that protected its passengers instead. So there's a bit of an issue here, because what these people want self-driving cars to be like isn't what they would want themselves. What would you want in that case? A lot of companies want self-driving cars to be road ready by 2020. Will you be getting in one when they come out? Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to learn about another interesting bit of technology, check out our video on Wi-Fi. Let's start off with the basics. Everything can be eventually boiled down to binary numbers, zeros and ones. My voice, this embarrassing picture of me as a teenager, everything. After all, a computer CPU only recognizes two states, on and off. Now the main thing that sets Wi-Fi apart Apart from the Ethernet is the way it transmits data. There's a link in the description if you're on mobile. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.